Good evening and welcome to night 36 of Fun with Cheese. Tonight's episode is entitled, This is no Prius, but it is a hybrid. Uh, tonight's friends of the show, I was pleasantly surprised in the mailbox today when I received a small package, but I know I did not order anything from Amazon or it wouldn't have come so quickly. And I opened it up and here was this note from my cousin Jonathan and his wife Amy out in Denver, Colorado, saying they watch the show and they enjoy it uh, and they catch every episode as it comes along. So they sent me this nice Colorado hat. Came in really nice today as the wind's whipping and it's really cold here. Um, those of you who are watching the show, if you happen to be outside of Wisconsin and you don't find yourself near a cheese emporium like we all have here, which cheese emporiums and cheese dairy, uh, dairy stores and things like that are pretty much like gas stations. You can find one almost every mile. Um, but if you look for a Senex, Senex convenience store, they carry a full line of cheeses. And I know I mentioned this like 26 episodes ago, but they carry a full line of cheeses from Wisconsin on the end caps. You can find cheese curds, which are not like the ones I'm going to bring to you because they've been shipped and vacuum sealed and put in a refrigerator and they're just not the same. But if you are craving Wisconsin cheese, you can find them in Senex all over the United States. Um, the shirt tonight, this is our new FFA shirt that we have for our pancake feed, which we didn't have yet. We're hoping to have, or maybe we'll just push off to the fall, but we are going to have a pancake feed of Palooza where we serve all kinds of cheeses and maple syrup and everything of all goodness. In the back, you can see we have a saying on there. I can't read it because I can't see the back of my shirt, but... Anyways, uh, we'll have some of these shirts available for a greenhouse sale, which is going to be drive-up service at Auburndale High School uh, the first week in May. And I'll get some more details out there if you guys are interested. You can go on my Facebook page. We will not be shipping any flowers to you. Sorry. Tonight's guest. Okay. Oh, I forgot one more. Mr. Gary Gerke, the pedicurist of the bovine. Happy birthday to you. I almost forgot that one. But tonight's guest... Uh, is a hybrid. He's a cross. He's an invention. Comes from Europe. And we call him Cambazola. Now, Cambazola is made in a wheel. It has some really cool markings on him, if you can see that. And you're saying to yourself, my gosh, that looks like a blue. You're right. It's a cousin of the blue. Why is it a hybrid, you ask? Well, we haven't covered this guy yet, but Brie and Camembert are two surface-ripe and soft cheeses. I mean, if they put the curd in the center and they put a mold on the outside, and that creates a surface ripening. Cambazola is of the same lineage. Now, can you eat this mold on the outside? Absolutely, and I think it's delish. But that's just me. Uh, it is a cross between Gorgonzola, which is an Italian cheese have their origins in southern Germany, in Bavaria, in the region of Allgau. And I'm sorry, Bavaria, I heard today that I was reading it in German. Uh, Oktoberfest is for Klosen. There's no Oktoberfest this year, first time since World War II. Um, this guy here had its trademark, our guest, was trademarked in about 1975 by the Champagnon Caserai, which is German for Chapignon Cheese Factory. Caserai is a cheese factory. Um, in Bavaria in 1975. Now, the Italians got really ticked off. And now, if you remember back to previous episodes, all these Europeans want some sort of like uh, copyright on their cheese. And so the Cambazola was trademarked in Germany in 75, but then in 99, the Consorio Pertatula de Formaggio Gorgonzola filed a formal grievance, which is the Consortium for the Protection of Gorgonzola Cheese, and tried and failed to get Cambazola from being called Cambazola and being called something else because they love their Gorgonzola. Anyways, it failed, and so here we have Cambazola. Relatively new cheese, I mean, from the 70s. So, it is a triple cream brie, which I was introduced to that about 15 years ago. Triple cream brie's are amazing. Uh, triple cream brie's mean that they have uh, cream added to the curd before curd for or to the milk before curd formation. So then it ramps up the amount of cream that's actually in there is 65 to 70 percent. You're like, how can that be? Then this is developed cream. It's on dry matter. 
okay um, so we have about 50% moisture in here and then on dry matter it's gonna be about 35% fat by dry matter if you're a nutritionist and you deal in dairy and things like that by dry matter it's 35% fat which you guys know that fat equals flavor and this thing is just smooth as silk Okay, four reasons why I love this stuff. It's triple cream, it's soft, high in fat, it's extra creamy, and um, it's just delicious. Uh, it's cracker friendly because it is so smooth. And you can just peel it off and eat it that way. Um, it's Blue's cousin because if you remember this guy, he's a slice. Now this is the blue powder. The other blues, okay, I can barely put in there. And then they... Uh, our blue feta and they inject the um, mold in there and then it comes out as blue, blue crumbles or different things like that but this is a cousin of it, it has that tang to it but oh you can smooth it out um, and so it's different uh, number four it's different and it's teen friendly when I bring this one out Limburger is left on the table I know you can't believe that but Limburger is left on the table they will flock to this come back the next day and ask where the triple cream is Triple cream is not sold at every grocery store. I'm sorry. You have to go to a specialty place. I picked this one up at Dairy State a while back when I was there. Um, so he's just, yeah. If you don't believe me, it's like butter. So you can just peel this off like this. I'll bring it up to the camera and you can see how delicious that really is. It's like blue butter. Um, I suggest triple cream breed. Now here in the venison... Uh, cavern in the venison bunker um, we try and pair all our cheese with Wisconsin amber okay uh, there's other things out there but with a Wisconsin amber a darker in Wisconsin amber something along those lines that's what this goes with now if we move to the dinner table and we're sitting around with family this stuff goes really good with fruit okay or a nice white wine but those are some things that it pairs with um, if you want more information on this, and you can always go to the uh, Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin website and check it out there. But um, I'm just giving the nickel tour of Camazola, which is a cross between Camembert and Gorgonzola, which is a blue cheese. And um, that's what it is. And this is a way, this is imported from Bavaria, so I'm bringing some German cheese from the southern region of Germany, which is where Jonathan's parents uh, met, was in Switzerland. Um, and so it's kind of a cool deal. I'm glad I got the hat. I'm glad I had the Camazola here to share it with you guys today. Um, it's cousin was called Le Swiss Petit. He was a Swiss guy. Um, but anyways, I'm glad you're here. I hope you're all well. Remember that milk is cheese, or it's cheese is milk step into immortality. Sorry, this stuff's got me all, all messed up <coughs> because it's so good. But um, you guys take care. We'll see you for night 37. We're halfway to show 74, which means that I'm almost 85, which means I'll have covered every cheese that Dairy State has uh, down there in Rudolph. So you guys take care. Happy cheesing. Gorgonzola, Camembert, Camazola.